By now the trend is now clear. On the side of the victors there are no small number of voices being raised that recommend or demand a type of anti-communist Nuremberg, and that's the orientation that inspires the ruling ideology and historiography. It's known that during the Nuremberg trials the Nazi defendants were denied the principle of two quo k, in other words, that based on the charges being contended they could call attention to similar crimes committed by their accusers. The Tokyo trials play out in a similar way. It's the justice of the victor, of course. Moreover, at the conclusion of the gigantic conflict, that had also played out as an international civil war and as a planetary clash between revolution and counter-revolution, think of the Nazis' theorization of the master race's right to enslave the inferior races, with a frightening and substantial leap backwards in relation to the process of the abolition of colonial slavery, we see revolutionary tribunals emerge in a number of countries, that in the case of Germany and Japan are imposed from above and from outside. The current historical trials of the anti-communist Nuremberg are a farcical replica of a great tragedy. It's evident that a historical judgment is unthinkable without the reconstruction of the time's atmosphere, comparisons and the recourse to the principle of two quo care are absolutely inevitable. It's with that criteria that I intend to analyze the usual criminalization of the events initiated with the October Revolution and Stalin in particular. There are no doubts about the terroristic methods of power exercised by him. But let's make use of the principle of two quo k. We now know about the hundreds of thousands of victims caused by the American bombing campaign against Cambodia. Here I intend to call attention to one detail in particular quote the peasants became captive to a blind terror. Their minds were paralyzed and they wandered around silently, without speaking for three or four days, a young village resident recalled. Their brains were completely disoriented they couldn't even have a meal. Unquote and many, driven partly mad by the terror, were never able to become themselves again. 1005 The terror isn't always exercised at a safe distance, bombarding from high above in the sky. With regard to the US, at the start of the 20th century a guerrilla war is still underway in the Philippines, and it was repressed. An American historian reports, with the massacre of entire villages, or with the execution of all males over the age of 10. 1006 Other times, the terror is carried out by delegating the dirtiest tasks to third parties, who are always aided in that task. Let's see how the US got rid of its political opponents in Indonesia. Hundreds of thousands of communists were killed after the 1965 coup d'etat orchestrated and supported by Washington. The recourse to terror and even sadism is systematic quote the mass killings began in October of 1965. The army had made and distributed lists of communists to right-wing Muslim groups, armed with parangs and transported by truck to villages where they killed and mutilated the inhabitants. School children were encouraged to identify communists, many of whom were killed on the spot along with their entire family. Many people were denounced over personal disputes, and a word or a finger pointed at someone was enough for them to be taken outside and shot dead. The number of victims was so elevated that it caused serious health problems in the east of Java and the north of Sumatra, where the smell of rotting corpses filled the air and the bodies obstructed navigation on the rivers. In 1968 they ordered mass executions, and at once the army and the civil guard killed in the center of Java 3,500 supporters of the PKI, beating them on the head with iron bars. According to Amnesty International, boys less than 13 years old, the elderly, the injured and sick, weren't exempt from torture, used not only in interrogations, but also as punishment or out of mere sadism. 1007 Unbel is the terror by the liberal West only practiced outside their national borders? No, it is not, one just needs to think of the violence that, in the first decades of the 20th century, is still carried out against blacks, and that is often organized as a mass pedagogical spectacle. Quote news about lynchings was published in local newspapers, 
and they added additional wagons to trains to transport spectators, at times thousands of them, coming from locations miles away. To allow them to attend the lynching, school children could have the day off. The spectacle could include castration, skinning, immolation, and gunshots. The souvenirs that could be taken include fingers, toes, teeth, bones, and even the victim's genitals, as well as illustrated postcards of the event. 1008 unquote. Moreover, the final solution to our Indian question drags on in Canada even after achieving its independence. But let's concentrate on the 1930s, the decade when we see Stalin's terror unfold in the USSR. In the US, the headlines and stories in the local newspapers are in themselves revealing. Big preparations for tonight's lynching. Not a single detail should be neglected. They fear that shots fired against the Negro may miss its target and strike innocent spectators, including women carrying their children. But if everyone sticks to the rules, no one will be disappointed. Let's look at other headlines. The lynching was more or less carried out as advertised. The crowd applauded and laughed at the Negro's horrible death. 1009 It's correct to speak of terror and not just in consideration of the effects that such a cruel, happily announced and advertised spectacle had on the black community. There's more, it wasn't just black men accused of rape, or in the majority cases consensual relations with a white woman, who were lynched. Much more minor offenses were enough to be sentenced to death. The Atlanta Constitution of July 11, 1934 reported the execution of a 25-year-old black man accused of having written an indecent and insulting letter to a young white woman in Hines County. In this case the crowd of armed citizens were satisfied at firing rounds of gunshots at the body of the unfortunate soul. 1010 Moreover, besides striking the guilty, death, more or less inflicted in a sadistic way, also loomed over mere suspects. Let's continue to examine the newspapers from that time and read the headlines, declared innocent by the jury, then lynched, suspect hung from oak tree in Bastrop's public square, the wrong man lynched. 1011 Lastly, the violence isn't limited to the culprit or the suspected culprit, it has happened that, before carrying out a man's lynching, the cabin where his family lived was set on fire and completely burned. 1012 inches addition to blacks, the terror also strikes at whites who, in becoming excessively close to blacks, become traitors to their race. It's what emerges in the title of an article in the Galveston Tribune on July 21, 1934, a white girl is put in prison and her black friend is lynched. The fact is that, an editorial in the Chicago Defender comments a few days later, a white woman can more freely pair up with a dog than with a black man. 1013 And if she doesn't take that into account, the terroristic regime of white supremacy lashes out at her twice over, depriving her of her personal freedom and attacking her loved ones. Therefore, terror also strikes at citizens who don't carry out any political activity but are considered guilty for having a private life contrary to societal norms. Betrayal in relation to the white race can take on even more serious forms. Communists are called nigger lovers for taking part in a campaign against the practice of lynching, and are therefore targeted by the terror wielded by the regime of white supremacy and forced to face the possibility of prison, beatings, kidnapping and even murder. 1014 Once again the stories from the newspapers of the time are revealing, fear of communism cited as the cause of lynchings. 1015 Let's return to Stalin's USSR. There's no doubt that, especially starting with the forced collectivization of agriculture, the concentrationary universe, that had already begun taking form soon after the October Revolution, experienced a ghastly expansion. But let's also apply the principle of 2 quo K in this case. Skipping over the concentrationary universe enforced in the U.S. South at around the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, let's instead see what happens around the middle of the 20th century. 
Between 1952 and 1959 the Mau Mau revolt breaks out in Kenya. Here's how the London government maintains order in its colony. In the Kamiti concentration camp, the women, quote were whipped, starved and subjected to hard labor that included filling mass graves with the bodies arriving from other concentration camps. Many of them gave birth in Kamiti, but the mortality rate among the children was overwhelming. The women buried their children six at a time. 1016 unquote also with regard to genocidal practices. The principle of two quo case still applies for that accusation. I don't know if it's possible to define the massacre of communists in Indonesia as the second biggest holocaust of the 20th century. In any case, it's a massacre carried out without the industrial efficiency of the Nazis, and therefore with an added level of sadism. At any rate, it should be to everyone's knowledge that, even after the end of the Third Reich, the liberal West's interventions in its colonies and semi-colonies not only led to the establishment of ferocious dictatorships, it also aided in the realization of acts of genocide. The Truth Commission in Guatemala stresses this, referring to the fate suffered by the Maya, guilty of having sympathized with the opponents to the regime supported by Washington. 1017 Finally. We saw how the Jacobins are horrible cannibals in the eyes of the Thermidorian bourgeoisie. Later, however, it will be the descendants of that bourgeoisie who will endure the Paris Commune's denouncement of the cannibalistic acts by the Versailles bandits. 1018 Regarding the 20th century, while the civil war rages on, the Bolsheviks call for the struggle against bourgeois cannibalism. 1019 Later, as we are well aware, it was Stalin himself who classified anti-Semitism as an expression of cannibalism. Nowadays, however, they take the tragedy and horrors of Nazino Island, where real cases of cannibalism took place, to reduce the events that began with the October Revolution to pure barbarism and to denounce red cannibalism. 1020 In truth, episodes of cannibalism had previously occurred, in 1921. The gravity of the famine reaches the point of provoking cases of anthropophagy. 1021 A year later, the liberal Italian philosopher Guido de Ruggiero observes, quote the Entente's blockade, that sought to annihilate Bolshevism, instead killed Russian men, women and children. Could the poor going hungry compete in democratic elegance with those from the Entente causing the hunger? As was natural. They rallied around their own government and identified its enemies as their own. 1022 Uncle, as you can see, the liberal philosopher blames the Entente more than Soviet rule. Witnessed cases of anthropophagy also occur in certain parts of China in 1928, 1023 cases that could hardly be blamed on the communists, who will seize power more than 20 years later, they will eventually blame the West, starting with the Opium Wars of having sent that great Asian country into the abyss. But let's return to the 1930s, yet relocating from Stalin's Soviet Union to Franklin D. Roosevelt's United States. Here's how a fiendish crowd furiously attacks a black man quote the first thing they did was cut off his penis and forced him to eat it. Later they cut off his testicles and forced him to eat them and say that he enjoyed it. Next. They used knives to cut off strips of skin from his torso and stomach, and anyone, one by one, could rip off fingers or toes from his hands or feet. Red hot iron was used to burn the Negro from top to bottom. From time to time a rope was tied around Neil's neck and they removed the stand from under him, until he almost died, strangulated, but then the tortured resumed, starting over from the beginning. After various hours of that punishment they decided to kill him. Neil's body was tied to the back of a car and dragged through the street all the way to Kennedy's house. There, a crowd of between 3,000 and 7,000 people, coming from various southern states, excitedly awaited his arrival. Unquote the entertainment around the body continues for a long time and concludes with the sale of photographs, 50 cents each. 1024 but we'll stop there.
it's clear that the application of the principle of 2 quo K has led us to discover in F.D. Roosevelt's United States a case, not of cannibalism provoked by general scarcity, disorder and hunger, but rather self-inflicted cannibalism, forced and organized as a mass spectacle in a society otherwise enjoying a high standard of living. In conclusion, the usual comparison of the communist movement on one side, and the liberal West on the other, makes abstraction, regarding the latter, of the fate reserved to the colonial peoples or people of colonial origin, and the measures approved in situations of more or less acute crisis. The comparison of the two heterogeneous set of measures ends up being Manichaean, one world exclusively analyzed by its sacred spaces and its periods of normality is triumphantly counterposed to a world that, Having challenged the barrier that separates the sacred space from the profane space, the civilized and the barbarians, is forced to confront a prolonged state of emergency and the irreducible hostility from the guardians of that exclusive sacred space.